And our second main topic today gets submitted to us by Thomas Patterson, who writes, So, the numbers are in. Free Guy scored a box office result of $28.4 million domestically. This obviously comes in ahead of Suicide Squad's $26.5 million and just below Jungle Cruise's $34.5 million. However, unlike those films, which co cost closer to $200 million, Free Guy was made for the $100 to $125 million range. Does this point to the strength of theatrical-only model, given that Free Guy was an original film not based on any pre-existing IP and actually did better as The weekend went on instead of grosses falling as The weekend went on, like Black Widow and The Suicide Squad did? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, listen, a lot of people forget that Free Guy despite having Ryan Reynolds in it is not a movie that a ton of people were going to go see. Rob, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's like, you know, the marketing's whatever. This isn't actually a video game movie. It's not even based on any recognizable pre-existing IP. This isn't a sequel. This isn't a remake. It's, it's about a virtual character living inside of a game. I mean, and we talked about how that that's, that's not spelling huge box office success. However, the movie came out and scored extremely well. As Variety writes, box office free guy debuts at number one with surprisingly strong $28.4 million. Again, the budget for this movie came in around $100 million, and the opening weekend, if you count international numbers, have already made half of that with $51 million collectively at the box office. For a small film, not based on any pre-existing IP, which I would argue, Rob, in a pre-pandemic era, wouldn't have done all that well. And this movie's fantastic. Like, I absolutely love this movie. I've been encouraging people for weeks that if you're going to go to the movies this weekend, do a double feature. Go see Suicide Squad and Free Guy, and you're going to have a good time. I had an absolutely delightful free time. But, Rob, one of the things they bring up in the email is really key here, that unlike a lot of these other movies like Jungle Cruise, like Suicide Squad, like Black Widow, the opening weekend numbers dropped from day to day. Whereas with Free Guy, they actually went up because word of mouth started getting out about it and it just started to go up. And it's not rated R like Suicide Squad, so parents couldn't hear, oh, that's a good movie, let's bring the kiddos. So that was kind of working against it as well. And they actually went up. Now, we're going to talk in a minute about Disney obviously being very happy with the results because they've already ordered a sequel, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. But Rob, when you look at the first Suicide Squad, I, the the 2017 is that when the first Suicide Squad came out? Can't remember. Around I think there. 16. 16. I think you're probably right. You know, a ragtag group of unknown characters and big bombastic whatever. Although it wasn't rated R, you know that thing comes in at I can't remember how many millions of dollars that thing. It was a big opening weekend for Suicide Squad. Now you come into this and its sequel made less than this little original non IP based movie and by the way don't trick yourself into thinking well ryan reynolds is in it and all ryan reynolds movies make money well we just had the hitman's wife's bodyguard that proves that that's not the case and you had the great samuel L. jackson and selma hayek in that as well uh uh antonio uh, banderas was in that as well and it it didn't do anything rob this exceeded my expectations it exceeded a lot of people's expectations this comes just from the folks over at variety who writes despite concerns the delta variant would keep moviegoers at home ryan reynolds sci-fi action comedy free guy had a better than expected start at the domestic box office the movie from disney and 20th century studios collected 26 million from 4165 north american theaters overseas free guy amassed a 22.5 million dollar for a global tally of 51 million dollars now remember again we're not talking about a big comic book movie we're not talking about this is pretty impressive for a film of this nature. Obviously, um, the pandemic played a part. Obviously, if it wasn't for the fact that we're living in a pandemic, it probably would have done even better. But this is a great result for this. And Rob, I think when you start looking at something like this, where you're seeing this little movie, not based, it's completely original, not based on any pre-existing IP, doing numbers like this, and doing better than a comic book property like Suicide Squad, competing with a big recognizable IP like Jungle Cruise with Dwayne The Rock Johnson in it, I think it speaks a lot to the contributing factor of they just put this thing in theaters. 
And I think that contributed to his success. And I think the studio and Disney reaped millions of extra dollars from this thing being in theaters than they would have if they tried to also put it on Disney+. Plus. At any rate, I am very excited for this movie because I think this movie deserves it. I've seen it three times already. I'm probably going to go back and see it for a fourth. This is a big win for them. Anyway, Rob, you had a chance to take a look at these numbers and these results. What do you make of it? Well, first of all, I, I to be honest, I have seen Free Guy. But, you know, for my – and I really want to see it. I just – I had to work all weekend. One of the things about this movie that I think it had going for it was I thought it had a brilliant premise. We all have played, you know, sandbox video games, whether it's Grand Theft Auto or, you know, <laughs> take Cyberpunk. What is it, 2079 or whatever? We all know what that's like, and non-player characters are a big deal in these games. And the very idea – that, you know, you're in this real world and you're going to follow an, a, a, a virtual world. You're going to follow a non-player character. That in itself is one of those genius ideas that comes along once in a lifetime. And then you're like, well, what if that guy was Ryan Reynolds? I'm like, I can't imagine a higher concept studio idea that deserved to get made. And it looks like love the movie. I haven't talked to anybody that's disliked the film. And it seems like they took that premise. And Sean Levy, obviously, I really like him as a director. I think he's able to, to take these great studio premises and, and turn them into movies that people love because he combines the great premise with a lot of emotion and heart, which a lot of people wouldn't necessarily do. And that's why I think it's done as well as it has. I mean, I think Free Guy, it, it, and this is coming from someone who hasn't seen the movie. I think people, because we now live in a gaming culture, people are going to be watching this movie for the next two decades because everybody understands what it's about. And it's such a clever idea. I, I, to me, it's an irresistible. It's, it's just one of those great ideas. And um, that's why I think people are going to see it because people, you know, we're all gamers now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just, I wonder how this would have done in a non pandemic era. I, I, I really do. But this thing is great. Positive word of mouth. I'm going to be very interested, Rob, next week to see what kind of drop it yeah. takes. Will it fall in that safe 50 to 60 percent drop? Like, will word of mouth keep it in there? Guys, please go to see this movie in theaters. It is so much fun. It's, it's not going to win any Oscars. It's not Citizen Kane. But it is just a delightfully entertaining film and good for the family as well. Uh, just real, real fun. So I'm going to be very curious to see, will it exceed 60% drop like a lot of other films in this pandemic era are? Will it be able to stay in that 50 to 60 range? Hell, will it even take less than that? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The question is for you guys. Why do you think that a movie like Free Guy was able to come in and exceed all expectations when other films have struggled to do so? Is it the fact that it was a theatrical-only release? Was it a fact that it was a non-rated R film? Could there be other factors involved? How are you guys feeling about this? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.